Hey there, my name is Jasmine Skye, and I'm here today with what I think is my first requested video, which is pretty exciting. So thank you to Shalala Meow Meow for asking me to make a video on how to choose an MFA program. I like this topic a lot. I think this is really interesting. For those of you who don't know, I have an MFA in creative writing from the Stone Coast program, which is the MFA program at the University of Southern Maine. I received my MFA in January, 2020, so it's been over a year now since I got my MFA, but I still remember the process of applying and figuring out where I was going to apply and all of that. Um, if you're interested in this topic and you have not yet watched those videos, you should check out my explaining graduate degrees in creative writing video where I talk about the terminology, some of which I'm going to be using in this video that I'll give a little bit of an explanation for those of you who are lost or don't quite remember, or haven't learned all of these terms yet, uh, but that's a good video to check out. And then I also have a pros and cons of getting an MFA video that you can check out. I also have a video Video, um, that is four tools I learned during my MFA program. So if you want to see the kinds of things that you might learn during an MFA, then you can check that one out as well. But anyway, if you're here, it's because you are thinking about getting an MFA, presumably. The first thing you need to think about that you need to decide is why you want to get an MFA. If you want to get an MFA because you want that master's degree for whatever reason, whether it's you might want to go into teaching or you want the like prestige of saying you have a master's uh, or you want that really intensive structured two to three year education where you just can focus in and really improve your writing. All of those are good reasons at varying levels of reason to want to get a master's in creative writing. But if all you want, quote unquote, all you want is just to improve your writing um, and you aren't quite sure if you want to spend the money and the time to do the full two to three years of a master's program, then there are other options. You don't have to jump straight to getting an MFA. There's a lot of workshops, seminars, classes that you can take. I did one of these kind of workshop courses uh, through my local university. Um, so I didn't have to be a university student. It was part of their extended education program. And I just looked and anyone in the community can pay and sign up for these extended education courses. Um, and I took actually took two of them and they were both six weeks courses. They met twice a week for six weeks. And um, you know, they were like a typical college course, but without having to be a college student. So there's a lot of options like that. You can also look um, at your local sort of community library, or if there's an arts or writing center, um, a lot of those kinds of places put on one-off seminars and one-off workshops that you can take. I have both taken and given a couple of those at my local library system. So there's a lot of options just for things in your community um, and also things online, classes, courses, workshops that you can take and, and do in order to um, get that intensive experience or that one-off experience to improve an element of your craft or just your craft of writing in general. So decide why it is that you want to get an MFA. Think it through, reflect on yourself, whatever it may be. But as I said in the pros and cons video, I certainly do not regret getting my MFA. It was such an amazing experience and the amount that I grew as a writer in those two years was extraordinary, even far so and beyond the courses that I took previously, those two six weeks courses that I took previously, I took before my MFA. Um, and I also, you know, have done a lot of one-off workshops and stuff like that. And, you know, those were useful, but they did not give me that jump in my writing the same way my MFA program did. So I'm certainly not going to tell you guys not to want to get an MFA because it was such a valuable experience for me. So if you're here and you're like, yes, I want an MFA, I think it would be good. Now you're here for this video, 
which is how to choose which MFA program to apply to, which MFA program to go to. Okay, first and foremost, you must choose the type of MFA program that you want to do. There are three primary types of MFA program. There are full residency programs, low residency programs, and online programs. Now, of course, in the COVID-19 times, pretty much all the programs were online programs, but now that we are coming out, hopefully, of the COVID-19 times, then things are gonna go back to how they were before, though I would not be surprised if more and more programs, online programs developed and or if more of the uh, colleges that did full res and low res have online components added to them uh, or like an online track or something like that. So there, there's potentially even more options in the online field because of COVID-19 and everything that has gone on this past year year in a little bit, but we're not sure yet. So let's go with what I am sure about, which is the three typical types. I talked about this a little bit in my explaining graduate degrees in creative writing, but to sum up, a full residency program um, is kind of the typical college experience. You go, you live on campus or near campus, you go to classes in person, uh, you likely will have some sort of job on campus uh, related to the program, though not always, and you kind of have that full-time writing college academia environment. The online program is an online program. You take all of your courses online, you turn in all of your materials online, and you get your degree online. Depending on the online program, it might be a combination of pre-recorded lectures that you just watch on your own time, or there might be some live like Zoom lectures that you do and Zoom workshops that you do as part of the program. It probably depends on the program, but either way, everything to do with an online program is going to be online and you can do it presumably from anywhere that you have internet and computer access. The middle ground of these two is the low residency program, which is what I did. Low res programs are not really online. Um, in fact, there isn't an online component for the most part. Um, what it is, is every semester you will go in person to your college campus or the retreat or whatever it is that the college does. In the case of my program, which was a low residency, they rented out an inn in a very beautiful town in Maine. So we didn't actually do our program on the University of Southern Maine's campus. We did it at this beautiful inn um, and we would have basically a like 10 day long conference that was the residency component of the low res program that happened every semester. And during those 10 days is when you did all of your workshops, your seminars, your hangouts with people, your talking with your advisor in person, all of that is in this very intense 10 day residency that you do again every semester. Um, so that's very typical of a low res program. And then once that residency is over, you go back home, you have an advisor for the semester. So you're not taking online classes, courses, online workshops, none of that. The only thing that you're doing during the course of the semester is turning in your assigned coursework, which in the case of my program was a certain number of creative pages and two what we called annotations, which were basically craft essays. Like we wrote essays uh, that discussed the craft of books that we read based on a reading list that we had come up with with our advisor. What I understand, this is pretty typical of low res programs. There's a mix of that sort of academic um, analysis of what other writers do and the creative work that you're turning in every, you know, every month basically over the course of the semester. Um, and you turn it in specifically to your mentor for the semester they get back at you, depends on your mentor, how that is. Sometimes they just send you a long edit letter, um, but a lot of the times, because I like it, me and my mentors for my various semesters would do like a Skype call or something like that. So there was a little bit of that online sort of teaching component there where we talked about 
the um, the packet and the things I had learned and things I could improve uh, through that kind of online component. Uh, but primarily uh, over the course of the semester, you're kind of just on your own. <laughs> they all have their advantages and disadvantages. The advantages of the low res and the online program is that you can do them from anywhere in the world. So long as in the low res program, you are able to fly to where the residencies are every semester. Um, there were people in the Stone Coast program I know who live in South Korea, Ukraine, everywhere across the world, and they flew every single semester to come to the residencies. So that is absolutely an option if you can afford that. You have to pay for your own plane tickets, you have to do all of that. So that is something to take into account versus the online program you can do from anywhere with no travel cost. The full res program, uh, if you don't live in a city with a full res program that you like, then if you wanna do a full res program, you have to move for the two to three years that you would be going there. So that's kind of how you, uh, how you can decide what's best for you, um, both in terms of the formatting and uh, your life situation. The other thing to keep in mind is about the uh, expenses of these different programs. Most online programs are the cheapest option and then low res are pretty cheap comparatively. And full res, if you're paying for a full res, then it is quite expensive. However, a lot of full reses are fully funded, which means, as I mentioned, you having a job. Uh, if you get into a full res program, often you will get assigned to teach usually freshman level composition courses. Some programs you teach freshman level creative writing, but it's more common that you're teaching freshman level composition than it is that you're teaching writing, um, but you can look often uh, the program will say what it is that their teaching assistants get assigned to teach. Um, and or sometimes you might get your um, funding by working on the school's literary magazine and a select few programs you sometimes get funding just by a fellowship, which means you don't have a job, but you are fully funded for the program. So you have to look, you have to see, um, Low res programs and online programs don't typically or ever that I have seen have fully funded situations. However, you can still get scholarships for them um, and you can get scholarships both through the program and through the school, but also always, always, always look for external scholarships. Once you have decided upon the type of program that you want to go to, then you need to look at the specific specifications of the various schools that do that type of program. So for instance, if you want to write genre fiction, if you want to write science fiction or fantasy, if you want to write children's literature, if you want to write horror or romance, then there are much less programs um, in the full res, fully funded sort of world. And that's one of the reasons why I chose a low res program is because um, there was a one of the best options in the country for genre fiction. If you do want to write literary fiction or if you want to write literary leaning genre fiction, then there are a lot of good full res programs that you can check out, um, but it really depends on the type of writing that you want to do. When you're looking at MFA programs, if they list out the concentrations that you can do at that school and it just says creative nonfiction, poetry, fiction, Fiction typically means literary fiction. They need to specifically say that they do genre fiction um, and the better programs for those of you who really wanna learn genre fiction are the ones that have a fourth specialty that is in genre fiction, popular fiction. Um, there's several programs that have a specialty in children's literature, things like that. So look for that if that's what you want to do. Again, if you like literary fiction, if you want to write literary fiction, there's a lot of options in the fiction category. That also um, includes the like women's fiction, book club fiction, anything like that. Anything in kind of that contemporary, hard-hitting uh, explorations of humanity, 
in the modern world or a little bit maybe even in historical fiction a lot of programs will will do that will lean into that um, but if you're writing science fiction fantasy more sort of uh supernatural horror and romance definitely kid lit all of that you are gonna have a hard time uh with a school that just teaches fiction so that's something to keep in mind. Google is your friend here. You can Google lists of MFA programs that accept genre fiction, that teach genre fiction. You can Google lists of MFA programs that focus on romance, that focus on kid lit, whatever it is. Um, and then once you've found like lists and write them down, check out their websites because a lot of them, they might give you course lists that you can look at. Um, but most importantly, you wanna look at kind of like their mission statement. They'll have like an about us that kind of talks about the general sort of thing that they want to teach um, and the environment of their MFA program. That's a huge thing for you to look at and see if you vibe with it. Um, but also very, very importantly, you wanna look at their faculty because I remember when I was um, applying for and looking for MFA programs, there was a number of full res programs that I looked at that said that they teach or they accept genre fiction within their fiction concentration. But when you look at their faculty, they don't have any science fiction or fantasy authors. They might have literary fiction authors that do literary fiction that is perhaps a little genre-y. For instance, one of the programs I looked at um, that said it did genre fiction um, alongside fiction, not as a separate concentration, but just like you could take genre fiction courses um, in the fiction concentration. One of the courses, uh, the course that was used as an example was a course on Angela Carter. And as much as I do like Angela Carter, what she writes with her fairy tale retellings is much more literary fairy tale retelling. So while you could argue, yes, this is fantasy, it's really literary fantasy, like not even literary writing in a fantasy novel, it's just straight up literary fiction in a fantasy wrapping. So these are the kinds of things to think about if what you wanna write is epic fantasy adventures or sci-fi adventures or you know awesome YA novels or middle grade or all of that, uh, then you wanna make sure that you uh, pay attention to the types of courses they do, to the faculty members. Make sure there are faculty members who write the kinds of books that you want to write or that you are writing. That is number one, the most important thing. Once you have found those MFA programs, look at the faculty, see if you recognize their names. You might not recognize their names. Um, with the Stone Coast program, when I was looking at the faculty, I didn't immediately recognize most of the genre faculty. But when I looked them up, I was like, oh, hey, they write the kinds of stuff that I want to write and then you can go later and you can buy their books and you can read their books and that's exciting. Um, but it's just important to know that they have industry knowledge and um, actual experience in the genre you want to write. Also, by doing all of that research and seeing their courses, their mission statement, the professors that are there, uh, that's a great way for you to personalize your cover letter so that you have a better chance of getting into the program that you have decided is a really good fit for you. So so to sum it all up, I will give you guys the example of the reason that I chose to apply to and then eventually go to the Stone Coast program. Uh, I had five primary reasons why I chose the Stone Coast program. Number one, it was affordable. It was one of the more affordable low residency programs. Number two, it I actually found the Stone Coast program on a list that ranked the top low res programs in the country and Stone Coast was in the top four, which was really awesome. Um, and it was the only program in the top four that had the kind of genre fiction specialization that I was looking for. Number three was the way that they do their specializations. There are a lot of programs that are very strict about once you've chosen a concentration, a specialization, that is what you do. And there is no sort of cross 
learning uh, among the concentrations. Stone Coast is very different. They highly encourage you to learn from the poetry students, the nonfiction students, the fiction students. You can take seminars in any of the concentrations. They have a lot of mixed seminars. Um, they have uh, some screenwriting classes and playwright classes and just lots of ways for you to learn and sort of grow your knowledge and they definitely come at it with the idea that all writers can learn and help each other so i really liked that culture but i also really liked that i could specifically concentrate in genre fiction at stone coast it's called popular fiction and that there were faculty members there who wrote epic fantasy and young adult and middle grade number four on their website um and in person once I was actually there, one of the things that really, really drew me to Stone Coast was their mission on writing for social change. So this is something that I find super important. That is something I'm always paying attention to with my own writing, other people's writing. Stone Coast has a strong mission that you should write to help the world, that you should write for social change, for equality, for environmentalism, for everything like that. So writing for social change um, is like a big mission statement of the Stone Coast program and is something that I really, really appreciated. And I love that that is the culture of the Stone Coast program. So that is uh, a big reason, again, why I applied and eventually went to the Stone Coast program. And finally, number five, I also really, really liked that Stone Coast has a reputation for balancing both the academic and the creative writing. A lot of low res and online programs focus very, very heavily just on the writing itself and less so on the academic aspect of a master's versus full res programs focus sometimes maybe too much on the academic aspect of a master's. And I liked that Stone Coast for me was the perfect blend where it was primarily writing and all of the academic papers that I wrote um, were focused on academically and analyzing the craft of writing. But for instance, at the Stone Coast program in your third semester, you write an academic research paper and a ton of Stone Coast students every single year present their academic research at conferences um, or even try to get their academic research paper published. I really loved the ability to uh, hone in and, and write a really long research paper and um, have that academic aspect to it. This is especially good if you want to teach creative writing at the college level because a lot of um, higher education institutions, when you are applying for faculty positions, whether it's adjunct faculty or assistant professorships or whatever it is, they will require as part of the application that you include an example of a research paper or an academic paper that you wrote um, and so this was this is now a paper that I can use and have as an example of sort of my academic uh, expertise so to speak so again loved that about the Stone Coast program that was my fifth reason um, because that's one of the reasons I wanted to get a master's program is I do really like academia and higher education. So it was important to me that my master's program had an aspect of that academic, more academic leaning side of things alongside the just improvement of my craft and the experience and the like constant sort of like need to write, 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 because <laughs> that's a big part of creative writing programs is that you just do a lot of writing, right? Um, and you get a lot of feedback on your writing, which is, you know, a big part of that as well. So that's the example. That's how I chose the Stone Coast program. Um, I applied to it. I got in, I accepted, and I did not regret it. Uh, and I loved every bit of it, even when it was very stressful because, you know, master's programs are stressful. Um, but that that's at least my journey. So I hope that helped you guys. Shalala meow meow. I hope uh, that answered your question and that helped you in your decision to choose an MFA program and find MFA programs um, that you might want to apply for. Let me know in the comments down below if there's any other 
things on this topic or any other topics that you would like me to cover. I could talk you guys through applying to MFA programs. I could talk you through various aspects of MFA programs or various academic conferences and things like that. Whatever it is that you would find interesting, just go ahead and let me know down in the comments and I will put them on my video schedule. Thank you guys so very much for watching this video. As always, there are links in my description to causes that need your support. Please go check those out and give your support, spread the word, whatever it is that you can do for those causes. You can always support my channel by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, etc. And I look forward to chatting with y'all in the comments.